ICS for you. This lesson is about running time of a program and the three basic sorting algorithms. You may have already seen the lesson uh, review on bubble sorts, so I will gloss over that uh, in during this. Okay, running time of a program. So often when we are uh, developing an algorithm or when, when we're choosing from, from uh, which algorithm to use from some algorithms that we already know, uh, we want to find an algorithm that's easy to understand, code, and debug. However, sometimes that's at odds with the next goal. And the next goal is we want an algorithm that's efficient and runs as fast as possible. Sometimes it's really easy to program bubble sort, but it's not as efficient as some other sorting algorithms. Now, on a modern computer, it really doesn't matter in a lot of cases if you're only sorting through a few hundred uh, records or a few hundred uh, uh, objects or, or integers, let's say, it doesn't matter what algorithm you use. Bubble sort, I mean, it may take a fraction of a second longer. No one will really notice it. But when you're making an app or an application, you're working for maybe a bank where there's thousands and thousands of records and they're more uh, complicated uh, and people are doing lookups all the time, uh, efficiency becomes important. Uh, because this is a computer science course, uh, we're not just programming, we're also talking about the, the idea of uh, why we're developing an algorithm a certain way. That's really what makes the course computer science versus computer programming. Uh, the college level course, ICS 3C, 4C, uh, the 4C course, we're just programming. We're just trying to get stuff to work. Um, and we don't really care that much about how it works. But in the For You course, uh, computer science, uh, the field of computer science is the theory behind how things uh, operate and how they work and, and why they work a certain way and how we might be able to make them better. And really, uh, computer science is the only way that we're going to get algorithms, or the best way, I think, that we're going to get algorithms, that we get algorithms in the future that are, are better than ones that we've had in the past. Um, Running time depends on input. So here's our next slide. Uh, determining how long an algorithm will take to execute depends on the type of input and the size of input. So if you have all zeros and ones, uh, well, it's going to take a lot less time for you to sort uh, a list of zeros and ones than it is if, if there's, a, let's say, a passwords file or maybe everybody has passwords that are over 10 characters long and there's special characters in there, there has to be uppercase, lowercase, all of a sudden you have a much greater variety and uh, comparing to see which uh, password comes before the other one uh, on the ASCII chart or lexicographically uh, takes a lot longer. And then what about the size of the input? If you only have five values, or whether you have five million values, that's going to determine how long it takes. So when we uh, evaluate algorithms on their effectiveness or their efficiency and how long the running time takes, it has to be independent of these uh, parameters, of these, of these variables. So we have to evaluate bubble sort, insertion sort. We're going to see another one called selection sort that um, when we evaluate those algorithms and, and even... Um, merge sort or heap sort, some of these other more sophisticated ones that take less time, we have to assume the n case, the, the case where, the have, where we have n values. We don't want to assume, oh, uh, we're only going to look at these algorithms with 10 value. Uh, we have a list or an array of 10 values because some, array, some algorithms may be more uh, efficient with a lower level of values and then once you reach a certain threshold maybe you reach a thousand or ten thousand maybe they become less efficient than some other ones uh, depending on how and you can do a graph of the time that it takes to sort in the worst possible case uh, uh, according to how long the list is or how long the array is and you'll s you can see that look that up for bubble sort and all these other different algorithms so Getting to the last point there, sorting algorithms, with A, part A, uh, that's with the type of input, um, a nearly sorted array. So with a nearly sorted array, it will take less time to sort than an array in reverse order. Okay, Because if there's only a few things to swap around in bubble sort, there's going to be less swaps happening, 
and it won't take as long. What about size of input? And that's something that I've already talked about a couple of times. Sorting five elements takes less time than 500. Okay, so what we do, and we're not going to be really getting into this because we don't have very much time left in this course, but let T of N be the running time. This is what you do if you took a computer science course in university or college. Uh, where N is the input size, I do need you to know that N is the input size. So if you have a list or an array of 12 values, N is 12. T of N, or T at N, is, is the number of instructions executed on some computer. Now, we remove the processing power s uh, from the equation. So we don't want, when we, when we calculate this T of N, we're not going to be taking the latest Ryzen processor and saying, well, that, that's how we're going to be measuring time. Because uh, what happens in a year or two when a better processor comes out? All of a sudden, our calculation is, is irrelevant. So T of N is, is not, uh, uh, should not depend on the machine or compiler speeds, okay? Uh, because time is only rel relative. We want to just eliminate time from the case. We're just talking about the number of, of steps, the number of computational steps it takes. And that's what T of N measures. And it's the worst case running time. But when we say time, we don't really mean time. We're talking about the computational steps or the number of steps. That's a really key point and it's going to be on your quiz. Um, sorting algorithms. Bubble sort. Bubble sort, you can look this up. It takes N squared steps in the worst possible case. Just like insertion sort and selection sort, there's another one called quick sort that we'll be looking at this year if we have time. And uh, it takes N log N steps in the worst possible case. And if you look at these graphs, um, N log N uh, goes up at a much lower rate than N squared. Uh, so with wi as you, as you uh, and let's take a look at the last point because this really drives the point home. With five elements, bubble sort takes 25 steps. Quick sort takes eight steps. So you might say, well, who cares? It doesn't matter. Bubble sort takes a few more steps. Uh, it takes 25 instead of eight. We'll never notice that. And you're right. But with a thousand elements to sort, take a look at the difference here. All of a sudden, bubble sort balloons out, no pun intended, I guess pun intended, to uh, a million steps. And quick sort only requires just under 7,000. So quick sort, the more values you have, the more important uh, which sorting algorithm you use. And it is true, Python and some other languages have built-in sorting algorithms. I don't know if Python you can actually select which sorting algorithm you use. Maybe you can. Let's just take a look here. I, I'm kind of curious. Python built, built in uh, sort. And let's see if it actually uh, does uh, something. I'll be right back. So this is something that we can look up in class. And if we can find it, uh, the built-in sort in Python, it's list.sort. And there's also a sorted command. Maybe we can find out which sorting algorithm it uses. So you can see here, where is it? Python's built-in sorting algorithm. S all you do is you do sorted and then array, and it sorts it for you. And you can store that in, a, in an array if you want. Um, and it says, for a deeper dive into Python's built-in sorting uh, functionality, check out how to use sorted or sort in Python. And the algorithm it uses is called TimSort, which is something we don't study in class. But you can look up Tim Sort. It's a hybrid sorting algorithm derived from something called Merge Sort, which we will not cover this year. But Insertion Sort is something we do cover. Insertion Sort is something we did in grade 11. Uh, so it's, it's a hybrid sort. Um, so there's all kinds of different sorting algorithms, and you can do hybrids as well. Okay, Bubble Sort. We already talked about Bubble Sort uh, in the last uh, review class, so I won't take too long. But just know that the first pass, the lightest value bubbles up to the top, if that's the way you're implementing it. And the second pass, the second lightest value bubbles up to the top, etc. And uh, there's some code that you might be able to use in Java to do it. I'm going to make this presentation available if you want to look at this later on. It's just a nested for loop. And in the nested for loop, we compare adjacent values and we swap them. And you have to write a swap method in order to use this. But that's something that we can easily do. And I am going to expect you to be able to uh, identify what a swap method looks like or a swap function looks like, or what the code and also the code for a swap function. 
So this is bubble sort the first pass. You can take a look at it. The four continues to win out and it, it, the, it keeps shifting values down. In this case, we're looking for the smallest value. In our other ex uh, example, in our previous lesson, we were looking for the heaviest or the largest value and bubbling it to the right. This time we've got values lined up vertically and the four keeps winning until it reaches the one and then the one starts winning and by the end, the one is guaranteed to be at the top. Then um, we are going to continue to do passes. So that's the end of the first pass. Then we're gonna keep doing passes and if you want, you can write a partition right after the one at the end there. So we, should, we don't have to compare anything to the one anymore. We know that the one is the lightest value by the end of the first pass. So now we're just gonna keep comparing in our next pass and find out that the two ends up winning over the three. Um, if you want a detailed example of bubble sort, look at the other lesson that was posted for uh, ICS 3U and 4U. And we're gonna keep going. Insertion sort. This is on the ith pass on the pass number i. So let's say you have a for loop that's controlled by the variable i. That's what we mean by the ith pass. And that's just terminology that's used in textbooks. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert element number i in its rightful place, okay? So, um, and there's some pseudocode that might help you do that. This code is so freely available online, I'm not gonna go over it very much, but you should be able to ins explain how insertion sort works. Again. That was described in the previous lesson that was a review, and it was for the grade 11. So you can go ahead and look at that, look at the insertion sort algorithm there. And here, oh okay, I'll do it here again. I didn't realize that this slide was here. I'll just quickly go over it. So you got the partition at every step. You're going to be um, taking the value that you're currently working on just below the partition and putting it um, in the correct place in the already sorted list. The already sorted list is everything above the partition. I like it better in the other video, so go to the other video and look at that for a review. Selection sort, this is new. So selection sort works a bit differently, where on the ith pass, we're gonna select the element with the lowest remaining value from the unsorted list. So we'll, we look through the entire unsorted list to the right of the partition or above the partition. And we're going to take that lowest value and put it right next to the partition below it. So let's take a look at how this works. At the beginning, on the very first step, we're going to be taking everything that is above the partition. But we don't have a partition in the first one. The partition is at the very bottom. So we're going to looking at all the values, taking the smallest one, and we locate it here, it's one, and swapping it with the value at the bottom. So the one and the four gets swapped. Then we, write, uh, we draw the partition above the one. Everything below the partition has been sorted. That's the sorted list. Now we're gonna uh, take a look at all the other values above the partition, locate the value that's smallest above the partition, the two, and put that right above the partition. So we're gonna be swapping the 10 and the two. Um, we're gonna be moving the partition up. Notice that the one and the two below the partition, they never have to move again. So in selection sort, once values are below the partition, they never have to get moved again. That's a really key point. Now we have the three, there it's gonna be swapped with the nine. So then the three's there, the partition gets moved up. The four stays where it is, so the partition gets moved up. Same with the eight. And then finally over here, the nine and the 10 battle let out. The nine is smaller, so it gets to go ahead of the 10. And at the very end, the 10, poor old 10, was uh, kind of bullied, if you want, uh, all the way to the top. We don't have to do anything there. If there's only one value left, we don't have to do any more comparisons. So once again, this is an n minus one uh, pass uh, algorithm, meaning that if there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold on. So the first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, in the seventh, there, there is no seventh path a pass. As you can see where it says seventh pass, there's nothing going on here. It's just the end. So maybe what I want to do in this slide is just uh, put we are done <laughs> because there really isn't a seventh pass. We are done. Um, okay, so that's fixed up. So six passes for seven values. Again, n minus one for n. So this is a mini assignment. I'll have it as a drive doc as a document in our online learning. And uh, the first thing that you want to do is implement bubble sort, selection sort, and insertion sort. I don't care where you get the code from as long as it works. However, um, 
uh, you do have to be able to explain the algorithm uh, during your quiz. Okay, that's the end of this lesson.